Oh, for the love of God, what are you guys still doing here? Like, like, okay, Davis, please. I know you got fanfic to catch up on, but you gotta put that pad away. Angel, you're in the wrong scene. Come on, let's get out. Christ, again. Yeah, no. Um, okay, Sean, uh, you maybe you want to swoop your hair a little bit because you got it a little strained out of place. He still looks like Elton John. Better? That's better. That's even more. So, uh, and Jeanette, I'm gonna need you to run the camera on this stuff. Uh, we're gonna need to start rolling in just a few minutes anyway. I don't even have a watch. That's how much time we're losing over here. Hey, where's Jose? He's um he's getting ready, preparing himself. Yeah, in his own way. Meanwhile. Okay. It's pretty simple. I'm just gonna go in there, sit down with the peeps, um, discuss the topic, and we're gonna go home, watch anime, play video games, beat some pizza, go to sleep. What? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Suffice to say, I'm not necessarily proud to be associated with this kind of motherfucker. The last time I walked into the bathroom when he was there, there was a goat and a can of shaving cream, and uh, I'm not gonna say anything. You see, it's about living up to the principles of being a leader. You don't just call yourself a leader and then just slack off. You know, there are, there are responsibilities that they have, that they expect from you. You know, the leader also has to be a team player. Where the hell is this Goliath motherfucker? Can I go on my tablet yet? No, you can't go on the tablet yet. We're on the clock. Uh, well. Can I get my phone in? No, you can't get your phone yet. We're on the clock. I'm too beautiful for this. You don't have to go. We're on the clock. What clock? Get back over here. What clock? We're on the clock. Dude, we switched to the night background. I think we're pretty fucking late on this thing already. Just because we switched to the night background doesn't mean it's too late. We're on the clock. We're waiting. Uh, hang on a second. Tall ass motherfucker. Mm. Uh, mm. Uh. distribute the food like that, then we can actually end World Hunger. No one's talking to you, Angel. Okay, fine, peace. Whoa. Okay. <clears throat> Welcome to another episode of the Ravens Vlog. Who wants to strangle him first? Wait, this. Wait for what? <sighs> Too bad I forgot my sword. You want to get in? Swords. I use You're supposed to, you get to go first. Guys, guys, guys! Whoa! Alright, well, we, have, we all heard the newbie. Yeah. Hang on a minute. I get to get you first. What's with this? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Mother! Um, excuse as me, you're... but as I recall, I'm the queen of the flock. Yeah, but I got first dibs. Okay, royalty, family, one question. What's with the, what's, what's with the unwanted violence? Um, How many times do I have to explain it? We're on the clock! Yeah, I know that. I then know. what the hell are you doing taking 38 hours? You took as long as me to get ready. Uh, and then it takes forever! Guys, you know, I just got a message from the cleaning crew. They say the bathroom is on fire. What do you do? What? Okay, um, that part has nothing to do with me. Yeah, uh, sure. Just like the goat, the shaving cream didn't have anything to do with you. I'm the goat. Listen, 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 listen. Hosting the show, preparing yourself is much, takes a lot, it's more time consuming than you know. Okay. I'm letting you get first dibs on them. Okay. All right. Nice. The moment we're off the air, you get it. Oh. Come on, guys. I'm sorry. I no, you ain't sorry. You'll be sorry by the time we get through with you. Well, go finish this. You know what? Around. I'm tired of this. We got a show to run. Fine, jeez. Yes, I know. Everyone's expecting us to do this. All right, Hi, guys. Right. Blah, blah, blah. 
Uh, so, back to the goats and the shit. <coughs> I mean, <laughs> one of these days. Hi guys. I know. Uh, if you're just joining us right now, you came in at the perfect time. It's a pleasure to have you with us today. Uh, again. 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 <laughs> We all, we all hope you enjoyed the last episode of The Flock, and uh, here we are, back again. Yes. Amazing. You, re you really took way too long. You are too out of focus. Uh, Everyone knows what we're, what we're here to do. We're here to discuss some important stuff here. Well, of course we're here to discuss some important stuff. And here, I was stuff. going to share some of my coffee with you, but not anymore. Not anymore. Now it's all cold and drank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Joe. The drugs are gone. Bas Ouch. Basically, what we've got going on, ladies and gentlemen, is... Uh, we're going to be covering uh, well, a relatively interesting issue that we're hoping that everyone can uh, get behind. Uh, we all went, uh, well, at least the majority of well, us. Hang on a minute. Let me ask everyone, before we get to that, let me ask everybody a question. We all, we all go to cons, I'm assuming, everyone, including the obvious cosplayers. No, I don't. Not at all. That's why I'm <laughs> cosplaying. This is just our Sunday best. We all go to cons. Well, when we go to cons, we all like to uh, check out the shows, right? You know, so occasionally. Occasionally. Well, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. We like to check out the fights, the shows, the dance shows, panels. We like to see all the guests, etc., etc., etc. I mean, he is way too out of focus. Let me get you guys with a proper opening here. Now, conventions, not just in the state of Florida, but all over the world, have their own special niches, their own special attractions. Something that it gives you that draw factor, other than having awesome guests and getting to see everybody in their favorite cosplays. Sometimes you have co conventions that have uh, their own stage performances. You have cosplay contests, uh, live uh, concert shows. You, uh, the, the state of Florida has been the innovators for doing live combat shows. Live um, combat shows, dance-offs. The, exactly, Which dance offs, themed balls, th things like that. Yeah. It's a funny topic that you brought that up because you know I do travel out of state for cons, Maryland twice and Atlanta, and both our AWA, Otacon, and KatsuCon don't do fight shows, don't do dance offs, nothing like that. They have the cosplay contest, opening and closing ceremonies, and that's about it when it comes to shows, which I think is really cool, personally. So they stick to a simpler schedule. Yes, but they also have better venues for photo shoots than Florida's in general. <laughs> Makes sense. Anywhere in Florida in general. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the one thing that we all want to uh, focus on today is a pretty specific topic. Basically, what have we not yet seen at our favorite conventions? And we're not just talking about here in Florida, we're talking about all across oh, the country. Yeah. Yeah. What kind of different attractions, what kind of different uh, programs or different um, uh, events can these conventions host or uh, produce in order to draw people in or in order to uh, get So basically, to... what, what, uh, what new Let events me... or what's something that we... That we haven't seen before. Yeah. Yeah. I'm following, up. I'm following you, bro. What are you following me for? We're all supposed to be following you. You took too long. We're on the clock. These are the same people that tell you what to drive. Which clock? Oh my God! <laughs> you keep clock, apparently. Yeah, we're on the clock. On you don't the know clock. the clock. It's well, a here's... miscellaneous unit of time used to for people who are always in a hurry. <laughs> okay. All the time. All, All right. the time. First things first, sure. though. Sure. Um, no, first things first, though. We're going to be uh, discussing what we uh, what we feel is going to be uh, a good idea for uh, different convention shows or different convention attractions, uh, either stuff that we've seen before or we would like to see. Or the stuff that we think haven't hasn't actually been done before, and then we're gonna actually throw up to what we believe you, the people, have actually brought to us because we went to Omni Expo, we got some uh, feedback from uh, attendees. Indeed. And we'll be seeing exactly what. Major props we got to uh, Sean and Angel over here for the man on the mic and the man behind the camera. Woo! Omni Expo was a good deal of fun while we were there. We only went for Saturday, but still, that didn't diminish our ability to have fun. I got a box. He got a box. He got Sean, a box. Great. Sean, you were, you're box. relatively a newcomer to the con world. What did you think of the Omni Expo? Uh, it was. I've been to MetroCon before and also MegaCon, though not as frequently. Omni Expo was extremely small compared to both of those. It really? was small, yeah. but like in some cases, you know, the small conventions can still be fun. Oh yeah, it was definitely fun. There was lots of cosplay tourism that you could do there. Um, we didn't go into the dealer room. Well. Angel went into the dealer Angel room. Angel went into the dealer room. Yeah. That's yeah. when he got a box. Yeah, that's <laughs> when he got the box. They actually had a bunch of interesting stuff. I, there's this thing I do when I go to the dealer's room. I have to forcefully put my hand to my pocket so my wallet won't just fly out. 
I don't know why. <laughs> because every time I go to the dealer's room, it's because I want to find some video games that normally I don't find anywhere else. You know, those yeah. little beautiful jewels. And I see them and I'm like, I want to get this. But there's a goddamn model over there. And there's a bunch of shirts over here. Oh, God, it's happening again. I, I have people hold my wallet for me for that exact there reason. I'm just like, here's my credit card, here's <laughs> my cash. <laughs> I have Don't a lot of Japanese version of Bravely Default, or a Bravely Second, actually, at Metrocon because the Japanese version came out way before the American version still True. came out yet. Only the demo was. I didn't even have a Japanese 3 I didn't even have a Japanese 3DS, and I was like, Bravely True. Second, please. And we hope that the everyone who attended Omni access. Expo for the weekend, I hope all you guys had fun. I heard the shows were great, fantastic. Dream Dance Rumble, um, the show hosted by uh, Shinobi School, uh, the, which was um, Borderlands themed. Oh, I uh, have a friend who was in that. Indeed. What yeah. is that? He, 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 he actually is um, the spokesperson for Shinobi School, does all like their marketing and stuff. Mm, very nice. Um, and he said it was a blast to be on um, that show mm -hmm. and to be with the Shinobi School. And um, he's actually going on to American Ninja Warrior. But shout out to Angel. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, random shout out. Hey, not you, Angel. <laughs> uh. A different, angel. A different angel. Also, I hope My you guys. Drinking buddy. I, I also hope that you guys enjoyed the uh, the best of the uh, Pleasure Pixels show this Saturday night. Uh, our cosplayer Pixel Doll was performing in her lovely belly dance Sailor Mars costume. Ooh. They had an amazing Sailor Moon group in the center of that building, didn't they? Yes, they did. They were fantastic. That I well, it would be if Imamuro was actually useful. <laughs> Every, like oh, that's one of the number one shit. tropes about Sailor Moon. Mamoru slash Tuxedo Mask is never useful. He could do so okay, much. He could. He's useful in the fact that he brings that Sailor Moon. You're talking to a Moon here. No, <laughs> right. so he's what? Sailor Jesus? Uh, he's more like, uh... Looks more like, like my job is done. He's, he's more like Sailor St. John the Baptist, if you want to go that what route. What I'm saying is, in a movie, I saw him stop a sword with his cane. That uh, dude's got skill. He could do some shit. Uh, true. I know, but he's other than always that. there for Sailor Moon whenever she can't fight, which is so precious and so I will never fault his emotional support to the ones that he loves. But he's got a cane that can stop swords. Yeah. He could do stuff with that. Yeah. Okay, we're getting, all right, we're getting way That is the coolest thing, man. You know what? Sorry, 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 should we start off with the interviews first? Yes. Sure. Should we start off with the Omni Expo interviews? Of we, course. We had of course. all of those. Yeah, no problem. We had fun. Angel, always on his top game behind the mic. On hey, the mic. always happy. We met a lot of very, very amazing cosplayers. And a lot of people were very happy to see us there. And uh, in a way, I kind of like the fact that this con was a little smaller than the most because there was less ground to cover so we could find more people and we could get more interview material. Mm -hmm. We had a fantastic group of cosplayers that were more than happy to share their opinion with us and uh, we got the footage with them, right? Yes, we do. So by all means, please enjoy and uh, hope you had a good time. Just a question for you. So far, when you come to a con, what is the kind of show or the kind of uh, panel that you enjoy seeing the most? I enjoy the voice actor panels. Uh, you too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any particular ones that you uh, had the chance to see in person? I saw, I think it was Crispin Freeman several years ago. He was oh, really? the original voice actor, uh, the English voice actor for Toga uh, ah. from Revolutionary Girl Utena, and that was a big deal. Wait, seriously? He was that guy? Yes. I'm, I'm sorry, every time you say Crispin Freeman, I just think Alucard, so... <laughs> it throws yes. you off, doesn't it? It does, it does. Now, personally speaking, I'm very happy that you get to meet your favorite stars, mm -hmm. by the way. Doesn't happen. But yes. The next time you come here, what would you consider? What would you like to see next time that you're on a like con? To see? I don't know. I, whenever I come to a con, I come to see the cosplayers. I come to see friends. Um, so I mean, more cosplayers, I guess. <laughs> so would you like to see a bigger volume of cosplayers? Yes, absolutely. That would be nice. That would be nice. What do you enjoy the most when you come to the cons? What do you like the best? Oh, for me, I think it's the fact that I get to meet new people and I make friends. Some of my best friends actually came from conventions. Really? Mm -hmm. Care to point out a few of them? Want to throw them a shout out? Well, one of them, of course, is my friend Samantha. We'll talk and, to her later. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, my friend Arome, and then there's a lot more individuals. Okay. <laughs> for all of those individuals, we give our thanks to Grinos, this amazing apparition. And for the next time you come to a con, any con, doesn't matter, what would you like to see more of? What would you enjoy more in your next con? Well, for me, since I've gotten older and now I have my own son, I would like to see a little bit more family-friendly areas or a place for the younger kids to where they have something to do. Ah. What is the thing that you enjoy seeing the most? Events, panels, whatever it is, just tell us what do you like to see the most in there? Okay. One time I was at Holiday Matsuri and everybody was taking pictures and cheering for everyone. They were like, woo! And then they would take turns. I was like, that's so motivational. Like, I would have done it. It was so motivational. I'm telling about that shit, that crap. 
we saw. No, by all means, swear all you want. It's a free country. You know that shit when they were like cheering for each other? I love that shit. That was my favorite. Beautiful. Why? No, it's so good. In fact, get over here. What are you doing? What is your name? Tell me your name. Do I like go up to the microphone? No, you tell me your name right now. It's Ricky Lee. It's a pleasure to meet you, Vicky. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Fantastic. So tell us yourself, what do you enjoy about the con when you come here? What ma what makes you feel happiest? I like making money. Like I sell at the conventions, but not this year, but next year maybe. Okay, so you enjoy capitalism. That's cool. That works just fine for us. Now, in the next cons, what would you lovely ladies would like to see more of? What would you want more of in the next con? Bad bitches. You got it. I would also like more bad bitches. As you see here, we have an extremely high demand for bad bitches. <laughs> if you had the power, if you were in charge of a con, what new element, like what new event would you actually bring to the convention outside of shows and panels and whatnot? Like from your own imagination. That's a good one. I feel like cosplay skits are really fun, especially when I watch them online. So I feel like there should be a cosplay uh, video contest, which would be like freaking awesome because like there's a lot of people here who do make videos like you guys. And like if they make, if I'm sure like there's hilarious people here, ma writing comedy sketches for in cosplay. I think it'd be freaking hilarious. Oh, that's actually very good. Oh, hey, check it out, guys! I actually did an interview. <laughs> Ow! Get, Get up! We're on the clock. Ah! Uh, you know, you, you know that the you know that clock thing is gonna wear out real thin. You know what else is wearing out real thin? <laughs> Get off me. Dude, no. But anyway, we want to send our humble shout outs to everybody who agreed to take an interview with us. No, Thank yeah. you, Danny, and we hope that you all enjoy the show and uh, we hope to see you again. Especially Absolutely. the Undertale group. You guys looked amazing, seriously. All right. Yep. So uh, now that we've heard from everyone else, all the interviews, now let's go back to us. Let's share our thoughts. Yep. Well, let's actually go, like I said earlier, we're going to start off uh, down the rover here and we'll work forward from there. So let's start off with uh, the newest, freshest meat of the flock. Uh, we'll start off with Sean. Uh, you've always got some, uh, you've always got one thing or another that you go on to always talk about in terms of either tweaking or making improvements to any sort of project. Let's hear what you've got to say for the entirety of the con world. Let's see what, what's, your, what's on your mind. Well, one of my favorite things about conventions in general is the video game room. Bigger oh, the better. God, yes. I love the video game room. <laughs> um, panels are great. I love the you know the special main shows like MetroCon has the chess match, of course, which is great. Mm -hmm. But I love the video game room, and I think that something that could be done to make it better is if the people who brought their consoles, especially if it's a homebrew that they make themselves or something a little more obscure, if they brought some sort of like information paper or something that people could take with them. So if they want to find out more about it, especially if it's something that they can purchase, you know, you can't necessarily buy a homebrew console from someone. But for example, when I was at MetroCon in last year, I think actually is when it was, someone brought k -Shoot Mania, which is a rhythm game, and it is extremely fun. It has a special controller that comes with it. Uh, it's a sound voltex controller, if you happen to be familiar with that. Um, but I went there and I, I didn't really know what it was. I had to ask people you know, what it was, and especially because I've discovered the community is very small for it, it's hard to find charts for the game to download onto your computer. Uh, it's similar to Osu in the sense that you can download charts that other people have made to play in the game itself. Um, but I'd really love to see more of that in the video game room, where especially if it's something more obscure like what is this? What's its history? Where can we get it? Is it still made? Can it even be gotten? Is this like one of the last few that are left? Like, I'd like to know some background about what's there because it's very interesting to see something that I've never seen before. But considering how obscure some of these things are, it can be hard to find out exactly what it is unless, you know, the person who brought it tells you. That's actually really cool. Uh, that seems to me like something that you'd have like in the gaming room, but not just there, probably in like the LAN party room. That way you have a little bit more security because over the LAN parties uh, at conventions, you usually have more security personnel there because those are just as, like when you're bringing in custom rings like that, mm -hmm. those are extremely expensive to, you know, make or purchase. So right. that seems like more like somewhere you place off for like the LAN party or have that as a designated uh, zone for the uh, gaming room if you put them together. So that Yeah, yeah like it, it depends on how the con's organized. I don't think MetroCon had anything really split out, if I'm remembering correctly. Like, there was just, like, the video game room that was, like, two rooms joined together, basically, just full of games. And 
Some of them were more, were more obscure, but I think there were just like a couple of Wii's in there and things like that, you know, which is yeah. pretty fun. But, you know, the more obscure things especially, it's like, what is this? Where can I get it if I like it? Mm. Where can I get it or can I get it? Right. Yeah. Now, you're, now you're bringing up awesome video game stuff and that's and, and you're bringing up like doing that, that set of, or would it be like tournament style kind of stuff or uh, for this uh, for these kind of games? Because I am I have no idea about homebrew. I, I have no idea on that kind of stuff. Um. Is it like more, is it sort of like a... Um, like obviously you wouldn't be doing Call of Duty stuff. I, 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 like I can't really speak to it because I don't know much about homebrew consoles myself, mm -hmm. but I know that they can be made and people do make them. Um, but I know that there are games that can be bought that um, can potentially be multiplayer or even, you know, you can have like a score attack thing where people take turns on a specific, you know, level or whatever and, you know, the top people on that level advance to the next bracket and they do a harder level and then whoever does the best like top two or three out of those moves on and so on and so forth but i know i've seen project diva i've seen keishu mania and i've seen a couple others that have all been very unique and interesting to look at and play um but it'd be good you know to have that more accessible to people who may not know about them yeah. It's really cool, man. And like you're bringing this up as like uh, obscure video gaming. That's one thing. Uh, but in a different form of gaming, that's something that I'm usually into. Uh, there was actually one specific... Um, it was a gaming event that happened during uh, one of the earlier years of ShadowCon. Uh, do, you do you remember by any chance, Jose? Do you remember it was a uh, dot .hack um, uh, al like alternate reality game? That was being played throughout the weekend, like a live game where yes. con attendees were. I know. What it's... year was that? Remind me. Okay, dot hack, dot hack, dot hack. Um. Wait, hmm. actually... Wait a minute. Was this held over in downtown? Was no, it... this was during. Uh, this is at the original, the cradle of the con. That the would have to be 2011. All right, 2011. All right, yes. thank you very much. Basically, what it was is that there was this alternate reality. Um, live game that that uh, that convention attendees can come in. They could play the game. There would actually be people posted at the at uh, specific places in the con, mm -hmm. uh, and where you'd actually be able to um, do sort of like a. Um, it's 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 kind of it's kind of weird to describe that you'd actually be assigned as like a a, a kind of a character like you're a uh, like you're like you're a mage you're a medic you're a brawler that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, you can tell I know nothing about the kind of like <laughs> games, but basically you're you you get to pick that kind of character. You get a score sheet for yourself. You got a uh, twenty sided die a d twenty, and you also got like a checklist for different quests or assignments that you could do mm. throughout the weekend. Basically, the idea was that you could actually play against other people and you'd be keeping track. And then you'd go back to uh, where, like uh, one specific panel room uh, at the convention where you're keeping score of yourself and you have like a DM or a dungeon master or whatever. And uh, basically you get to um, play against other uh, convention attendees. Uh, and it's, it's sort of like LARPing in that way, but, that it, but it's actually brought out throughout the entire weekend. Um, I would actually like you're, to see... I was going to say, you're elaborating a lot on this, Wancho. Is there something you... Is that something you'd like to no. see more? Yeah. It's a massive multiplayer I, I, LARP. Yeah, exactly. That, that, thank you. Thank you for describing it personally. It's an MMO LARP. Thank you. That's exactly it. Mm -hmm. Um... Something like that. I haven't seen anyone per, like put up some kind of game like that at all since ShadowCon 2011. And I would actually love to see uh, somebody come up with that. Um, and we've seen... Um, We've seen uh, like uh, at MetroCon they had uh, a, like a Battle City tournament style of like Yu-Gi-Oh and stuff, and you'd actually get uh, like location cards or whatever. Nice. You get to uh, like you have designated dueling areas. If you had something like that, like a specific area at the convention where you have like three or four tables set up and you can actually duel against other people, you have a judge there to monitor. If you actually had that set up and then you're like, okay, day two, like you can come in, check in at the uh, panel room. And you have the next round of the tournament, and then we'll set, set it up to the final four at the at the end of uh, Sunday, and that would be actually like a live event for Sunday. I actually, have that in the main event. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That would be, wouldn't that be something neat? Like if you had, like, they basically where you have the con attendees be a part of the spectacle, be a part of the like of the stuff going on. Okay. And, and like, an interactive and maybe, show almost. Yeah, exactly. Like, an, like it's an interactive show, but it's a game. Yeah. It's a game for everyone who can attend who is attending on there to participate throughout the weekend. If you put that in a venue like MetroCon, if you put that in a venue like ShadowCon again, yeah. she's gangbusters. Just print money. 
print money every day, you know? <laughs> that would be, that be, would awesome. be that Something would be like awesome. that, that's something that that's I think... That's a pretty cool idea. Like, yeah. As a matter of fact, screw it. I'm going to set that up for my own uh, uh, for my own gaming. Copyright, nobody can, uh, can take me on. I'm uh, taking you all out. I'm holding my breath. I'm <laughs> your idea. <laughs> no way I can use it except me. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to react to well, it. Actually, well, actually, exactly. let's uh, go to Damus and Angel, then I'll go last. So you're gonna we're going to skip ahead of this guy. Great, we're on the clock. Skip him. Right. <laughs> skip um, this guy. Nope. I guess, like, for me, I don't, I'm not a big fan of con shows. I don't like them. I like interactive shows like Medieval Times or, you know, the Murder Mysteries and stuff like that. Um, but I think that having a more interactive opening and closing ceremony for all cons, actually, not just here in Florida, all cons, um, would actually bring more people to like the opening and closing ceremonies more people looking forward to those because at most of like the out-of-state cons that i go to awa and katsu they have their day zero one two three cons mm -hmm. so they're a four-day con um at katsu they had opening ceremonies thursday night um right before ticket open ticket booth open and we didn't go because well we were checking in but we didn't go as well because um it's just, it's not interactive, it's not fun, there's no show, it's just, hey, it's Katsu Khan, these are the guests that are gonna be here, this is what's going on in the main room, this uh, thing. These are some panels run by, like, the cons or whatever, and you introduce the, um, the guests there, and that's about it. Like, and then the closing ceremonies, they have, like, their closing words and stuff like that, how much fun they had. It's not really showmanship, it's just, like, I'm going to a political rally. I don't like this. Mm -hmm. So I think that yeah. personally, that if cons and con owners would make it more of a show, people would have more fun from like hour zero to the very, very end of this con and make it like very, very showmanship. Because that's kind of what the Florida cons are known for is all of their shows and stuff. So why not extend that into the opening and closing ceremony? Ah, to bring more right. pizzazz in it. More yeah. pizzazz. More Another pizzazz. thing that might be good uh, in that um, front okay. is if people who went to the opening ceremony got some sort of like trinket or token or something, and if yeah. you brought that to the closing ceremony, you could get some sort of like special souvenir or something. Yeah. It's like you were there from the beginning to the end, and you have this thing now it's, that you can exactly. commemorate it with. Like just some cool. like small little like random weeb trash token because <laughs> face it we're all weeb trash we're here. All, right. <laughs> all of our things are shit get like a trash can keychain with like moe eyes on it yes, yes. <laughs> do you mean me yes. <laughs> <laughs> i hope doris and i will notice me what, what about you angel? what about you angel um uh, my honestly my uh, my so suggestion is not really a big one i actually oh, come do on. enjoy con shows when they have some good choreography the last oh, con oh. me and joe went to there was this amazing show that uh, I can't exactly recall the ball, but it involved Hercule Satan fighting Little Mac. Yes, I know what you're talking about. It's it was, the uh, it's the uh, Shadow Tournament. Yes, the Shadow Tournament was very fun. I truly enjoyed that, and I like shows like that. When you can throw some good, decent choreography and a nice, easy to follow story, that's good. The problem was, the show right after, though it wasn't bad, I had no idea what was going on. Oh, now, we're talking about the one that you and I have a disagreement yes. on, Breakdance Breakdown. Yeah, like I said, I don't hate it. Bitty, bitty. I just have no idea what was going on. Now, they explained to me later on Facebook that the show is actually an ongoing thing, like an episodic thing. You know, like it's following up and I'm, you know what, that's fantastic. But I'm still a newcomer there, so I had no idea what was happening. So, I'm not saying change the whole thing immediately. Just every time you do that show, if it's a follow-up for a different show, give me a synopsis. Just a brief summary, a little something so I know what's going on. That's all kind I Kind of ask. like a video montage of like the past years, like yeah. they do in actual TV. Thank you. Exactly. Yes. That's what I want. <laughs> but just something to help me and everybody who is new at the show just catch up to the story and find out yeah. why these things are happening. Plus, it's been a year since they last saw the show, too, so we kind Even of need a refresher for forget. the plot. That's a really Thank great you. point, that's a great actually. Idea. Because so, yes. that's I know right. that the Metrocon chess match actually does have a video recap at yes, the beginning. They do. Of the video. So, <laughs> God, they have a video <laughs> And it's pretty well done, as a matter of fact. <laughs> so, that's what I'm asking. <laughs> you know, Give me a summary like... to the beautiful fan fiction so I can really know what's going on. That's all I want. Yeah, all right. yeah. And I know fan fiction. I've been playing Project Zone like, for the last five days. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. You won't shut up about it. All right. It's too good. All right, John. 
Johnny Cash. All right, Johnny Cash. We, 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 we got through everybody else. Now it's your turn. The house okay. the beans. will now speak. All right. Well, first off, I appreciate the compliments. It ain't a compliment. I was making fun of the fact that you're a man in black. But Johnny but go Cash on. is cool. <laughs> yes, Johnny Cash is cool. Johnny Cash, Cash cool. is cool. Anyways. But yeah. <clears throat> um, I've been going to cons for a long time now. About as long as my brother here. Well, mm -hmm. not as long, but still. I've gone to the I've gone to many cons in Florida. I've seen many shows. I've seen many panels. I've had the honor of meeting many guests. And it's been it's still a hell of a run for me. And it's almost been ten years, has it? Almost. Yeah, what? no kidding. <laughs> Old it, I no, know Metro, this MetroCon is gonna be my ten years, so yeah. <laughs> yes, we are surrounded by geezers here. No, now, there's just one geezer. Now me. Don't get me wrong. I, I enjoy watching the shows, the shows that the conventions host. Uh, Metricon has their chess match, the Masquerade Ball. Shadowcon has Shadow Attorney, Breakdance Breakdown. And there are other shows hosted from different conventions. On the Expo have their own shows. They have Dream Dance Rumble and so on and so on. What I would like to see is more, and this is just my personal opinion, um, more emphasis and more like not more attention but like just an, uh, just as much attention on the the other shows that are, that are hosted by like independent performance troops that go into it i mean let's let's take uh, omni expo for you example. want more spotlight on the indie con scene well yes i mean mm -hmm. fucking the reception from omni this year i mean granted it was a small con but still shinobi school and pleasure pixels they freaking rocked the house and those guys aren't necessarily a, they're not of actually from the production of Omni Expo, they're their own thing who came yeah. in and put on their own performance. Exactly. So your so your big thing is that you'd prefer seeing a showcase of these smaller um, like like dance studios and comedy troops and uh, performing teams have center stage kind of thing. Yeah. Well, not not for all convention. Like I said, I still enjoy the shows hosted by the cons. But it would be really cool if, to see the independent performance troops. You know, get the same spotlight. For instance, what, uh, like if, if, we, if we were to set up with uh, in the future the, the the horror of the internet <laughs> as we oh, as we have dubbed them, yes. our good friends Mecha Chocobo. Oh the, now those God. guys are incredibly disturbing, but their brand of comedy is beyond compare. And having them be a part of uh, any sort of convention, I don't think you can handle is... any more Mecha Chocobo, man. I'm already friends with Angel. That's punishment enough. You, <laughs> you haven't been punished until you've been in front row getting lap danced by Darth Maul and followed by a butter lettuce party. Butter lettuce oh, party! Too much. Too much. Too much. <laughs> so that was an like... interesting weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Please come back, Evil Con. Just saying. Oh, Mr. Well, Screenshot Pie, do you enjoy pie? Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. <laughs> what is your favorite pie? Pumpkin. Pumpkin is very good pie. Though, frankly, I'm more present to blueberries myself. Apple's my second favorite. Apple is very good. Apple's Cinnamon favorite. apples or just plain apples? Both. Oh, yes. What's up with the pie? What's up with the pie? She We're to... ignoring you. There is a brick wall of shun right here. So there's just some more pies. All right, well, then I'll get to the point. The point is, everybody goes to cons. They all enjoy what they see. There are those of us who actually wish that they, uh, that they would see more what they want. As we've so eloquently uh, put, so... Can one, I say oh. something really fast? This is going to be like my really trashy side talking. I want to see either a straight up Legend of Zelda show, and I know there's like hardly anything to do with that, but like I want to see a Legend of Zelda show either independent or run by the con community or an Assassin's Creed show, because Assassin's Creed. Well, I mean, I'm just saying if they, if, yes. if, if they come up with something as clever as, you know, the Metricon Star Party, I mean... I don't know. You've got Star Party going on in yeah. the Well, Star Party is, like, Nintendo in general. True. But I'm talking, like, straight up LOZ or straight up AC. If we were going that route, then, like I said, you could, uh, like, we could very easily uh, say that we want a show for every single fandom there possibly yeah. to be. That would take forever in a day, and there wouldn't be enough cons in the world to hold that kind of stuff. True. But we brought up Shinobi School, so you guys should do an Assassin's Creed show. Hey, Shinobi School. Because you guys you're do the parkour this. shit. Parkour! <laughs> Shinobi School, if you're listening to this, we're not saying we're going to basically get down on one knee and hump you until you die, but uh, we're heavily implied. <laughs> <laughs> He's heavily implied. The point is, I'm heavily that implied that for everybody here. Every, every attendee, every person um, who goes to conventions, they always have their desires of what they want to see at the cons. And you know what? If you really 
want to see any of your desires happen, voice your opinions on the internet. I'm sure there are forums or uh, on the on the con websites well, that they can go to. I know on con Facebooks, um, because I have the pleasure of of knowing a lot of these Florida con owners. They actually do check the Facebooks. So if you go on after our con and leave feedback about the convention or even on their Twitter, because a lot of them do have Twitters, if you leave feedback saying and nice feedback, not. Yeah, not don't not salt. Don't, don't don't throw salt. Don't roar like a child. Don't say your con is trash and you should feel bad. <laughs> yes, some of the cons are still in hell. Your con is shit. Makes you should feel like, like shit. They they actually love hearing um, positive, yeah, constructive criticism, and they love hearing what you have to say because at the end of the day, you're the attendee. You're the person who's letting them still run their convention. So getting feedback from the people who go there is the best thing they can do. Don't leave negative feedback. Always leave constructive criticism saying, hey, maybe you guys should have this next year. Indeed. Every time you waste on a swear is a time that you could spend on saying something useful. Basically, or copies of Splatoon at people. That works too. Basically, if you want to voice your opinions, approach this logically. Uh, but if you're going to start like putting swear words and typing everything in caps and come off like a child, chances are they're just going to ignore you or ban you or just ignore you. Yeah. Your post wait, is wait five minutes, come back, see how you feel. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. The point yeah. is, your voices are there for a reason. Let them be heard and eventually somebody is going to listen to them. Only as long as you say it nicely, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, she just does that. Okay. Okay. Hi. 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 Hey, Jeanette. This is just going to be one of the greatest mysteries of life. Indeed. So. Indeed. Yep, definitely. Well, I think we pretty much covered the entire topic. I think we basically wrapped this up. Should we do plugins? Plugins, people. Anybody got something to plug? Sean, you plugging anybody? Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, Jeanette, you plugging anybody? Are you plugging like uh? She's plugging. Bath and Beyond. She's plugged in front of us. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Magic was plugging. This is permanent, um, though. All right. Uh, Damus, uh, I know you plugged something. Yep. I mean, there's always my uh, Tumblr and Instagram, Stay West Cosplay. So feel free to give me a follow. I'm posting a lot of work in progresses <laughs> right now. These links. But um, a lot of fun, and feel free to drop me questions on my Tumblr too. Indeed. Angel? Angel I uh, don't really have anybody to blow in. I just want to say my thanks to everybody who's watching the show. We hope that you'll continue to follow us on our journey to bring the truth and the honesty of the world to the con scenery. And I'd like to plug in here, Camilla, producer of Platinum. Shut up! Oh my God. <laughs> Shut up! Camilla, no. son, you've got yourself your own personal Please Kabuki girl. Please block me on Twitter somewhere. <laughs> okay, if that's the case, then I would like to plug in. God almighty. <laughs> so, Kondo. We're gonna be here all day. <laughs> We're gonna be here all day. Kondo, the composer for all the Legend of Zelda music. We're gonna be the best music. Oh ever. my God. <laughs> we'll okay, let's plug in our Let's plug in our friends from the Nerdo Realm Network. Jeanette, if you don't mind, could you just show off the Nerdo? Show off the. Brand? Be the Vanna White. Be the. Vanna White. <laughs> <laughs> our friends from Nerdo Realm Network. We look forward to seeing you. It's cool. It's gone. All right. Cool. I think you can lay back across because I got really? something that we got to plug. The next convention where you're going to find the Ravens flock, hands down, is going to be at Florida. Florida. No, we're not. Are we, are we going? Yes, we're going to Florida. Are we going to FAE? Yes, we are. Okay, okay I guess we're going we to FAE. Dude, we went there last year and we scored an interview with Trina Nishimura. I am you not. You have to tell me this stuff. I'm over here thinking that there's another convention we're going to. Surprise! Sit behind the pie wall. Right, well, we're going to FAE then. We're going to Florida AMA Experience. It's going to be on uh, April 22nd to the 24th in Kissimmee, Florida. And um, I only know about one guest that's going to be there. Her name is Caitlin Glass. She voices Winry from Full Metal Alchemist. Bitch! She voices plenty of other like, characters, of course, but of course Winry's the one with that we know we're best. Are you um, Miss Glass, I've done it before. She is now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My Davis is the hype. <laughs> Davis is the hype right now. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing you all there, and uh, don't forget to continue subscribing to the Ravens Flock on Facebook, on Twitter, uh, of course, YouTube, our main channel. We'll have our links posted in the end. And of course, don't forget our other, our other two fine shows, Los Amigos Play and The Black Files. You have been uh, patiently seeing wait, and waiting for our uh, return to those shows, and we'll be coming back. We've got plenty of stuff to, uh, uh, to show you in terms of hijinks and opinion, and of course, um, we're always here to uh, lend a hand in case if there's uh, any sort of psychotic anime apocalypse going on. Indeed. Well, that all being said, we are the Ravens Flock, and I need to go get my sheep and sheep. Okay.